What's up everyone? This is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos come in every week. Also hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of these videos that I post every week. Today I'm going to talk about my plan for my board preparation. For those who you don't know, after your fifth year residency, you take a board exam. It's an eight hour exam and it's to become board certified for orthopedic surgery. Each specialty has their own board exam for anesthesia, internal medicine, pediatrics, family medicine, neurosurgery. Everybody has their particular board certification exam. Each year during residency for orthopedic surgery, it's November 11th, if I believe is, that's the right date. Every orthopedic surgery resident in the US takes the same exam Essentially, it's a mock, it's a mock orthopedic surgery exam. It uh, we call it the in training exam or orthopedic in training examination or ORTI, and we take that every November. So next week, it's approximately 90 days out from that exam. And what I tried to do, what I'm going to try to do this year, is to because a couple months later, I take my real exam. So this year, I'm going to treat this exam like it's a real, uh, my real exam. So I'm going into it full intensity. Uh, I'm about to turn up my study in, um, the amount of hours that I study each day, the amount of questions that I do. So I'm turning all that up in preparation for this exam. So what I'm going to do, what my plan is, is to do 5,000 questions in 90 days. And the way I'm going to do that is this, especially with my schedule being, you know, very busy, working a lot of hours and residency. Um, because in med school, I think in, in med school you have it easier because you get to, I didn't mostly go to class. Um, I only went to mandatory classes. For the most part, I never went to class. So you can check out that video here. I'll put it right up here. But I think as a med student, you know, if I wanted to, because I didn't go to class, I could roll out of bed at, you know, 9, 10 o'clock, you know, start my, go to the gym, eat some breakfast, you know, read the newspaper, watch the news, watch ESPN, play a quick game on Xbox, and then start studying around 12 and study for the rest of the day. Um, in, in residency, I have to work. So I can't miss surgery. If I'm expected to be in surgery or take care of a patient in the hospital, I'm expected to be there. So that's why I think is a lot more challenging in residency. And in med school, you may think in, in pre-med, in college, you may think, oh, I don't have enough time. I got so many things going on. In med school, it's to a 10th degree. You may think, you know, you're busy, you got clinicals and the rotations in the hospital, maybe in your first and second year, you got the autopsy at the coroner's office, you got, you know, research, all these other things that you're doing. And residency is to the 1,000th degree because you really don't have time. I work 60 to 80 hours, sometimes longer than that, especially on trauma surgery per week. So, and then when I come home, I still have to study. So I think it, it's a lot more challenging. You have to be very efficient with your time. Uh, so my plan is to do 5,000 questions in 90 days. And the way I'm going to do that is it, it comes out to about 55 questions per day, no days off. So every single day I have to be doing questions. Um, at this point in my career and my stage of training, I don't read a lot of textbooks. I only use it to reference. So when there's a question or something I need to look up, like a, a certain condition or a procedure or a surgery, I'll just refer to an article or to a textbook. But for the majority of the time, the way I study, I do questions and I, I read the explanations and I look up things that I don't really understand or maybe forgotten. Um, repetition is key. I do think that is key. So seeing these things over and over again and see how they ask the questions. but. 50, 55 questions per day, and I plan to do half of that in the morning time. So, if I have to be up at six o'clock in the morning for a six or a seven o'clock case, or to see patients or be in clinic, I'm going to get up 
an hour, hour and 15 minutes before and do those, you know, 27 uh, questions. And the evening time, I'm going to do the remaining half of that. And you have to give yourself ample amount of time to review the questions as well. So I use a kind of a minute or one minute per question kind of rule. So that 27 questions should take me about 27 minutes. And then I use the remaining time to review the answers and explanations and all that. So my goal, 5,000 questions in 90 days is going to prepare me for my boards. Um, so, and I'm going to start that in about a week or so. You guys can use this same kind of routine or mentality when you're studying for your medical school exams, for your step one, step two, step three, for your MCAT. It's about how many questions you do. If one person sitting next to you does 9,000 questions and the other person sitting next to you does 500 questions, who's gonna have the higher score? The person who does more questions. Questions is key and that's how you do well in exams and that's what I found to be the best in terms of how to be successful when you're taking these exams along your path to be a, uh, a physician. So, and you can use this for physical therapy school, for nursing school, dental school, law school, business school, the same type of concepts and routines apply. So, 5,000 questions in 90 days, I'm taking that challenge, no days off, I'll be grinding it out for the next 90 days, and um, I'm looking forward to um, knocking out this in-training exam in November, and also doing well on my boards and becoming board certified as an orthopedic surgeon. All right, so you guys have my plan now about what I plan to do in the next 90 days to be successful um, on my board exam. So I'm going to tell you what I think you guys should be doing, how you should be studying, uh, to be successful in med school on your MCAT as well as your step one, step two, step three. When I was studying for the MCAT, I used preparatory programs. I used Kaplan as, as well as Princeton. Uh, but there are a lot of other programs out there like Exam Crackers. Uh, there's uh, Step Up. Uh, so lots of different programs that you can use. I definitely suggest using a program, especially if you've been out of school for a while and it's been a while since you've taken the class. Uh, so I suggest using a uh, program. There is an awesome program out there, it's called Lecturo, that they are the sponsors of this video and I think they are an extremely good resource to use. If I would have known about this program in med school, I'm pretty sure I would have done a lot better or I would have learned the material a lot better as well. When you're studying, it's important to be organized and programs like this, they help you stay organized they help you stay on track. There's ways to log into the system, either online or an app, that you can constantly go back in and kind of review that material over and over again. And I think that's the best way to learn. Uh, some people talk about space repetition, and Lecturo, they put this throughout their program. When I'm studying for residency, uh, it's a five years long to study for residency for, and before you take your board exam. So, if I study something my intern year, there needs to be some sort of way that I can review that same concept over and over again in a prolonged period of time over a, a duration, say for instance those five years. And that's called space repetition. And I think space repetition is uh, definitely key because I'm constantly reviewing medications, I'm constantly reviewing concepts, different uh, cancers of the bone, different procedures in orthopedics, that's what I do. I constantly go back over it over and over again. So if you have a system in place by uh, some type of program or an app that allows you to constantly review this material, either, either in med school or in, uh, as a pre-med or in residency, I think that's a, a great addition to your kind of study regimen and uh, study toolbox. So I'm gonna take you guys a little bit around Lecturo's uh, website. They have instructors from all over the world, from Ivy League schools. It's been used by medical students at over 600 schools, uh, kind of all over the world. So it's a uh, pretty dope uh, website and also a uh, dope company that uh, I think will help you guys be successful. So here we go.
So I just got to the website and once you get to it, it's pretty simple and self-explanatory to use. Uh, up in the right hand corner, there will be a login button. I'm already logged in, but as soon as you come onto the website, it, it's fairly simple. Uh, up here in the left hand corner, whether you're studying for step one, MCAT, to com Comlex, step two, your NCLEX for RN, these people have it all. And one thing that I was surprised about is how many videos they have on this website. It's amazing how many videos that they have. Say for instance, you just wanted to review, for me, some anatomy. They have over 432 videos just for anatomy alone, which is pretty awesome. Um, if I'm, let's say, studying the, or doing a hip fracture, um, a patient comes into the ER and they break their hip, and I want to review some anatomy before I do that patient's surgery, this website has pretty much every video that you can think of about anatomy. So let, let's pick up one of them. Let's pick one from the, the bladder and pelvis. There's actually a patient yesterday who had a hip replacement um, after he came in with a fracture of his hip and he, he had what's called a bladder rupture, which means during his accident, his uh, bladder actually ruptured and the urology team had to repair it. So being cut down in the sagittal plane. And here we can see we have the male pelvis and here we can see we have the female pelvis. And what we can see is anteriorly over here. And so this allows you to kind of speed it up if you want to or constantly go back and review that material. You can also download the slides here and also some articles here. So to read a little bit more about it, but Anything that you're studying for on, on this medical path from the MCATs, if you're already in med school, the USMLE, to once you're done, this site is awesome to use. Uh, there's also a question bank, which I think doing questions is essential. Like I said, I'm doing uh, in 90 days over 5,000 questions. Uh, this is a way to review that material that you're doing and also to uh, just make sure that you're understanding uh, what you're reading. Make sure you understand it. Um, the reason why I like their QBank, let's see if I can, uh, let's do all subjects and then do all systems. We we'll start off with 25 questions. The reason I like their QBank is because it reminds me of the actual step one exam. It has the very similar format and the way this is kind of structured, you have your lab values up here in the corner to reference like your calcium levels to see what the normal lab values are, uh, hematologic, the bleeding times. So you can use that and this is exactly what it looks like on your step one exam, a little calculator. So these questions, they have the answer here and they give a really good explanation uh, with pictures at the uh, bottom. Once you finish your questions, you can add these questions to what's called space repetition, which means that concept, you can have it automatically set in their system to remind you to review this concept again. So I think it's a great way of learning. And like I said, it's called space repetition, and that's here. And it sends you an email reminder. It says, remind me when there are more than 10 new do questions. So. Space repetition is all about redoing previously answered recall questions. Each time you answer a question, it's automatically added to this little um, area here. So you can take it over and over again over a progressively longer span of time. That way, space repetition helps you remember what you already studied. And I think that is essential. I think that is key to being successful in your, in your studies and also your exams. So a cool feature that Loterio has is called Bookmatcher. And what this does, it allows you to take a picture or enter a page number into a certain textbook and it will find relevant lectures for you on their website. So if you're studying physiology or if you're studying for the MCAT or pathology for step one, or even as a resident, uh, you can use this kind of aspect of their program. So I'm gonna go over, um, I'm gonna quickly go through the, uh, this, this uh, portion of their app that they have. 
So download the app and then you can log into their website. Once you have your, your app that's downloaded, you click on the, the app here and it takes you to their home page. And they have, you can access your curriculum here. And also if you go to the fourth kind of button over is the uh, book matcher. So I'm gonna try this. I'm actually reading a orthopedic surgery textbook, um, reviewing how to do a hip replacement. I have a surgery tomorrow. So if you hit scan page, what that's going to do is, and I'm using this book here called Operative Techniques in Orthopedic Surgery, but the section that I'm reading is about total hip arthroplasty, which is about a hip replacement. So I'm going to take a picture of this page here and see what it comes up. Take a picture of it, and then it's going to upload it. It's going to find relevant lectures for you. So all of these lectures here, which is awesome, 70 lectures. So there's anterior thigh muscles. Say, for instance, I want to review my anatomy uh, on the posterior thigh and popliteal fossa region. Just click on the lecture. It's that simple. Now let's move on to the posterior thigh and the popliteal. So the femoral artery passed through the adductor So canal, you have to know your anatomy as canal. a surgeon. So this is a really good addition to their uh, program. And then you can have some, you have some practice questions here about that particular anatomy. So... This is a really good, you know, something that you can really incorporate into your study. And I, I think this is something that's unique. I haven't seen it out there before. So you guys should definitely check out the guys over at Laterio and see what they have to offer you. Like I said, whether you're taking the MCAT, whether you're, you're taking the step one, two, three, if you're a nurse taking the NCLEX, you should definitely check it out. In the description is a link to get 20% off of your subscription. The code is DrWeb20, D-R-Web20. The link is in the description below, so definitely check it out. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. You don't want to miss them. We'll see you next time.